Hi everybody, this is Robert at Scott Leroy Marketing. Today we're going to show you how to set up your eEdge website. KW International over the last couple of years had said that the eEdge site was going to be going away, but then at Family Reunion in 2018 they changed their minds and instead the eEdge site is going to stick around. So we're going to get you some instructions for how to set that site up if you do want to use it instead of the Playster site. I do want to point out that the Playster site is the newer, more customizable site and KW International does recommend that you use the Playster site, but if you'd rather not, you'd rather use the eEdge Edge site, this is for you. To edit your eEdge site, you're going to access it through mykw.kw.com the same way as the Playster site. You don't log directly into the website to make changes to it, you log in to mykw.kw.com. Once you're in mykw, there's a couple of ways to get to your website. The normal way, which doesn't always work depending on market leader having issues or not, is in your eEdge control panel under the My Marketing section. We'll click on the plus sign to the right and we're going to click on Manage eEdge Website. Now that should take you directly to the website interface inside eEdge, but just in case it doesn't, maybe if the page doesn't load or if it asks you to log in, come back to your MyKW homepage, and instead we're going to click on View Contacts just to get into the eEdge system. And once we're inside eEdge, up in the top right, we'll click on Account, and then we'll click on Website in the dropdown that comes down. Once we're in the website interface, we're just going to work our way from top to bottom over here on the left. It's not a very complicated site to set up, so this won't take too long. For theme here, which is the default place it takes us, we have three options. There's this theme right here, this one, this one which is pro only, which you have to pay for, or this one. You'll notice most of these themes look pretty much the same. Some things might be a little bit rearranged and some might have different colors. And you can also choose the colors for your theme down here, but they're all going to look pretty similar. We're just going to leave this as the default one, the Rambler. You can change the color down here to some of these other colors and it'll show you in the preview if you want. I'm going to leave it as red because we are KW agents. Once you've updated your theme, you'll click on save down here at the bottom. One other thing to point out about the themes is they are mobile responsive. So if someone is viewing this on their phone or on a tablet, it's going to rearrange the page so that it looks better on a smaller screen. Both the eEdge site and the Play Store site have this capability automatically. You don't have to turn anything on. It's just the way the site is built. After we're done with theme, we'll drop it down to site images. <clears throat> you can change the logo that shows on the site up in the top left here, and you can change the banner image that shows behind the search bar. Those are your only two options to change images on the website. For the logo, by default, it's going to have the plain KW logo, and you can leave that if you want to, or you can upload your own personal logo or your market center's logo if you want to. To do that, you click on Edit over here on the left, and there are some requirements here for the size of the uh, image. It has to be at least uh, either JPEG or PNG, and it can be no larger than 230 pixels wide or 140 pixels tall. The vast majority of images that people try to upload are going to be much larger than that. So um, you're going to need to resize your image down to be smaller than 230 pixels wide and 140 pixels tall. Once that image is smaller than that, you can choose your file here and upload it, and it will show near the top left of your website. You can also choose from some of the Keller Williams logos here. We don't recommend choosing any of these old style logos. These were retired about four-ish years ago. We would recommend using one of the more modern logos instead, and this is the one that's going to be on there by default. Once you've got your logo selected or uploaded, you would tell it Save, and then now you can come down and change your banner. You would want to click Edit again, and you can upload your own image right here, and uh, it tells you the optimal size for your theme, depending on the theme you've chosen. Uh, what, the three different themes have three different sizes here, and it tells you exactly how many pixels wide or tall it should be. I don't believe that this is a maximum size. I think it can be taller or wider than this, and the site will still accept it. But if it doesn't, you would want to resize your image to be smaller than these dimensions. You can upload your file here and it would be added to your site or you can choose from the several dozen different images that they have stock images right here that are already in the site. There are beachy scenes, there are mountain scenes, there are plain scenes, there are farm scenes, lots of different ones for you to choose from and you can even search them by keyword or location. I can search mountain right here, do search and now it's going to show me mountains. These are actually 
uh, mesas, but you know, it thinks it's a mountain. Or I think this is probably like Denver, there are mountains in the background. Um, you can select one of these other images. Once you've got it selected, you would save it down at the bottom. Moving down to pages, it says pro right here, and normally that would mean you have to pay for this feature. But there are some pre-existing pages that automatically exist in the site when it's created. Home, sell, finance, communities, about, and careers. These are automatically going to be in your site. You can update the content of these sites by choosing it in the drop down here, and you'll have your WYSIWYG editor, your what you see is what you get editor. You can add links and images and things like that. You can't add videos here unless you have the embed code and you know where to put it into the source code here. Um, and you would just cho change that in uh, by selecting it in the drop down here and then clicking save down at the bottom. You can also create one additional custom page by clicking add new page here. It says pro here and you would need to pay for any additional pages after one, but you can add one single custom page to the site if you wanted to. You would give it a name and it would be the same editor as all the other pages. You do your content, you do your title and your description. If you want more information about SEO titles and descriptions, definitely check out our search engine optimization video. We can get that sent to you if you send us an email at support at scottleroymarketing.com. Once you've made the changes to your page, before you go to a different page, you want to make sure to click save down at the bottom. Back on the left on blog posts, this is a 100% pro feature. You would have to pay extra for this feature, so we're not going to cover it. In the footer, this is where a lot of uh, compliance or regulatory or legal information would go. Most of the time, and in fact I've yet to see a site that doesn't have it, the each Keller Williams office is independently owned and operated that will automatically be added to the site. If you go to your site and you see it's not automatically there down at the bottom here, it says it right there automatically. You can also add it to the footer yourself just like it is right here. And you can also add links to things that are required um, by either your office or your MLS organization or your state. This is required by Texas right here. Once you've made your changes, you would click save down at the bottom. On the left under content, you can add communities served. And this is uh, basically a simple way to add some uh, content to your site. You would do add community and you can give this community a name. We're going to call this a test right here. And then here in this box, you're going to be searching your MLS for a zip code, a city, or a neighborhood. So I'm going to do uh, for city here, we're going to do, uh, what is this, Tulsa. We'll do Tulsa. Oh, apparently that's not a city in this MLS. We're going to do SA. Does it have an SA here? Okay, so Sabal Bay. We'll call this, uh, pretend this is the Sabal Bay page. You click on that, it adds it down here. You can add additional areas to this, um, and you can name this this area and this area, and it would show uh, listings from both of those areas here on this page. It's up to you whether you want to add any actual content to here. It does require something to be in this box. Most times when we're adding these for you, we would do something like Sabal Bay, and then, oops, and then you want to do a comma and the state. It won't accept it if the content of this is the exact same as the name of the community or the area. I'm not sure why it removed that. There we go. Scroll down here. You can scroll around on the map and you can center where this community is on the map. Oh, it's pulling up my GPS location by my, um, what's it called? What's it called? IP there. Under that, you can add an image for this community. It's up to you whether you want to do that or not. And then you've got your title and your description, and you can get more information about that from our SEO guide, and we can send that to you. Once you've got the information for that uh, community in your page there, you would click Save, and then that would be listed at the bottom of your site under Community Served down here, right here in this section. It would also be on Communities right here. Uh, one thing to point out about the home page, this right here where it says visit my new website by clicking here, this area is the only content that you're allowed to change on the home page. You can't move things around, you can't change uh, whether it shows featured listings or not, you can't add any widgets, you can't add any images down here or whatever. This right here is the only customizable section on the home page, and you would do that under pages, and then in the drop down select home. That's the only thing you're changing. Okay, over here under content again, we've got partners. This is another pro feature that we're not going to cover. You would have to pay extra to have this. Under that, we've got recommendations. 
This would be if someone had come to your site and come to your about page and underneath your picture, they have this option to recommend. That's the same as a testimonial or a review. They can click recommend, fill out the review form here, and then it would automatically be added to your site. You can control what's shown on your site and what's not after it has been submitted. Um, it's up to you whether you want to edit it uh, or remove it once it's been submitted on the site. That'll show up over here on the right, but it will show by default. So if it's something you don't want on your site, you would need to come in here and manually remove it. Under that, we've got website analytics. You would need to go to Google Analytics, which is analytics.google.com, and there's a link to it right here. And you would need to create an account paste in your .kwrealty.com address into that account and it would give you a tracking ID that starts with UA and then a dash and then a whole bunch of numbers and then a dash and then two more numbers. That uh, tracking code would be pasted here into this box and then you would click save and then within roughly 24 hours or 48 hours you would go back to your Google Analytics account and you would be able to see the stats from your website. Under that, we've got our listing search section, and on the options page here, this handles a bunch of uh, kind of mis miscellaneous stuff. This is choosing what people are able to search by on your website, which drop downs are available on the search page on your website. So if I go to search here, I've got these filters that I can choose from. There we go. These are the filters that I'm choosing on this page. What things do I want people to be able to search by? So features, listing type, property type, additional search fields. I could add, say maybe I lived in more of a tropical touristy area, I could add pool. And um, once I check that, I could come back to my search page. And if I click on filters, I have the option to choose pool. There we go, does it have a swimming pool? Under that, we've got search areas. This is where you would put in just self-explanatory areas that you are licensed to operate in. So um, areas that are not covered by your listing feed are not allowed. So say you work in a multi-state area, say you work maybe up in New England and it's a bunch of small states up there and you're licensed to work in uh, Maryland and DC, you would do Maryland and then you would put DC into this box, District of Columbia. Say, but if you're only licensed in one state, you would only wanna put that one state in this box. I think by default, it's gonna put the main state that you're licensed in in here based on your MLS feed, but I'm not 100% sure on that. Under that, we've got our lead generation and activity tracking section. You've got two options here. One is active, which means people are able to view one property site on your site, one property page on your site. And then as they go to view the second property page, a pop-up form will uh, come up and say, you must fill out this pop-up form in order to continue viewing site details. Or you can choose passive, which means they can view five properties before that pop-up shows up and says you must complete this information in order to view property details on the site. You can upgrade uh, and pay more to have more control over that, but we're not going to cover that because that is a paid pro feature. We're also not going to cover the search widget because, again, that's a paid pro feature. That's a widget you can embed on other sites, and that's something you can pay for extra. To update your contact information and your picture that shows on this website, that's done um, either up here on account and my account or over here on the left under my account. That goes to the same place. On this page, you would edit your contact information right here. So your title, your name, your email, your phone number, all those things that show on the website are gonna be in this section right here. Under the, that, we've got the marketing section. This goes on your marketing material. So this is not something that's gonna show on your website. You can ignore this section. Uh, once you've got the information up top here updated, you would click save down at the bottom. And then if you scroll down just a little bit, this social media section, these do show on your website on your about page. Those are shown right here. So you can add your social medias right here. You would click add. You would choose what site it is in this drop down here. And if it's not in this drop down, it can't be added. You would paste in the full HTTP colon slant slant link for whatever profile it is that you're wanting to show on your website and then click save. Under that, we have these three images down here. The only one we care about for the website is website image right here on the left. The marketing image goes on marketing materials that are created, created inside your eEdge database, and these can be different pictures. 
This one shows on website. This one shows on marketing materials like flyers and email campaigns. And then for marketing logo, this shows on flyers and email campaigns as well, not on the website. That's controlled in the images section of the website like we covered earlier. So you can edit this picture, choose a new file and upload it, or you can leave the one that's already there. And then lastly, to update the office information that shows on your website all the way down here at the bottom, the office uh, phone number and website, uh, excuse me, physical address and name, that goes over on the left under office info. Um, actually, that's not the last thing we're going to cover. We have one more thing. So we've got uh, the office info section here. You can click edit and change the name of your office and the address and the time zone and all those things here. This is all pretty self-explanatory. Once you save this, this would be updated down at the bottom of your website. And then now the actual last thing we're going to cover is the uh, activity alerts and MLS setup. Activity alerts is uh, what and where you're going to be notified when um, a lead comes into your website. So you can choose whether you be, are notified by a contact who updated their information on their account while they're logged into your website, when a contact who has already created an account on your website sends you a message, when someone who has not created an account on your website sends a message, um, and you may want to be wary of this. A lot of spam and scam emails come this way, so you want to pay attention to messages that come in this way. And when someone fills out that recommendation page on your website. Those are the types of notifications you can get from your website. You can also subscribe to daily alerts for uh, the activity that people are doing on your website or in their account via whatever email that you choose right here. You can check and uncheck these boxes for these alert subscriptions. And then you can also get text message notifications for these same alert subscriptions. Once you've got all that updated, you would make sure to save it down at the bottom. And then lastly, we've got the MLS setup here. This is where you would set up the MLS feed for listings to go to your website. By default, only the KWLS is going to be shown on your website. Only KW listings will be able to be found on the search page. You would want to contact your market center leadership to get the IDX set up for the actual local MLS so that all listings in your area can be shown on your website when people search rather than just KW listings. We do do IDX setup for a handful of offices, but for most offices, you're going to want to contact your market center leadership and they can help you to get IDX set up on your website. If they tell you to contact us, feel free to. That's how you can set up your eEdge. Oh, one last thing about the eEdge website. Um, under account, actually we're already in account. If we go to account and settings right here, this is the address of your eEdge website. It's also shown up here in the address bar. So it's going to end in .kwrealty.com. That can't be changed. And then this first part right here where it says Scott Leroy, that can't be, well, it can be changed, but it costs $150 to do so. You would want to contact Market Leader directly, and you can do that via their help menu. There's their number right there, 800-491-4234. They can make that change for you for $150, but it will always have to end in .kwrealty.com. That's how you can set up your eEdge website provided by Keller Williams. If you have any questions about that, feel free to shoot us an email at support at scottleroymarketing.com.